hi friends welcome to all in this video we are going to discuss about host forwarding decision also we will see a default gateway right before coming to this topic uh, friends if you are watching our channel first time or if you like to get these type of technical videos in future consider subscribing also don't forget to enable that bell icon near to the subscribe button so that you will get a notification message whenever we upload a new video okay right coming back to our topic first of all we will see host forwarding decisions okay in the last video we have seen uh, about a network layer and here we will see another role of the network layer uh, that is to direct packets between host now uh, usually a host can send a packet uh, in three ways uh, that is uh, a host can send a packet uh, to itself uh, to a local host and to a remote host we will see that using this cisco packet tracer simulation so we will have a pc here we will rename this pc as pc1 We will assign IP address for this PC. We will go to desktop, IP configuration. We will give an IP address 192.168.1.10. Okay. Anyway, here we are not going to set a default gateway. Right. So, first of all, we will see uh, how a host uh, can ping itself by uh, using a special IPv4 address. Uh, so, we will go to we will close this IP configuration and we will go to command prompt. Here we are going to ping to uh, loopback interface uh, to test uh, TCP IP protocol stack uh, on this uh, host PC1. So here we are going to use uh, a special IPv4 address. Now here we can see that ping 127.0.0.1 and here we can see the replies. Actually, here this uh, loopback address range is from 127.0.0.0 till uh, 127.255.255.255. Hence, uh, here for the uh, self ping, uh, we can use uh, any IP address uh, in this range. Uh, so, here I will show one more example. Uh, we will give a ping uh, 127. I will give a 255.255.255 so the last IP address in this loop back and here we can see uh, we get the replies sure this PC1 uh, send the packets to this uh, PC1 itself next we will see uh, how a host can send a packet to a local host that means uh, the source host and the destination host are the same network for that we required one more PC this is PC2 and then we will assign IP address for this PC2 uh, in the same range of the IP address what we set for this PC1 so that we can say both these PCs are the uh, same network so coming to PC2 desktop IP configuration here we will set the IP address uh, 192.168.1.11 now we will connect these two PCs PC1 and PC2 uh, using a switch 2960 we will give this switch as uh, S1 Even we can connect two PCs uh, without uh, using a switch, uh, what is called a peer-to-peer -peer, uh, connection. So there we have to use uh, a crossover cable. First of all, we will uh, see this uh, connectivity. So coming to connections, so here we will use the copper straight through from S1 FA0/1 to this PC1, then uh, FA0/2 to this uh, PC2. Now we are going to do the local communication uh, from PC1 to PC2. Uh, we will uh, ping from PC1 to PC2. 
coming to PC1 or even we can do from PC2 also. Coming to PC2, command prompt, here we will ping to PC1. Uh, we have to give the IP address so 192.168.1.10 and here we can see we get the replies. Even we can connect two PCs each other using copper crossover. So we will do that. We will take two PCs. Then we will connect using copper crossover now we will assign IP address for these PCs we will give 192.168.1.20 or even we can give it 10 ok then coming to this uh, PC5 desktop IP configuration 11 now we will try to ping from PC4 to PC5 coming to PC4 command prompt ping 192.168.1.11 and here we can see we get the replies Yes, see whenever we want to connect two PCs at home, no need to purchase uh, any switch for that. Uh, we can connect two PCs uh, using this uh, uh, copper crossover, then assign the IP address uh, so that they will communicate each other. Only one thing we have to keep in mind, uh, we have to assign uh, the IP address from the same subnet for both PCs. And some people connect like this uh, for uh, playing uh, multiplayer games. Okay, right. So, uh, this is how a host uh, send a packet to a local host. And here we can see both hosts uh, share the same network address. And here we did not set any default gateway uh, for the uh, local host communication. Now, we will see how a host can send a packet uh, to a remote host. For that, we have to design uh, two uh, networks. So here we have one network, then we will use a router 2911. Then we will have one more switch, then uh, PCs, then we will connect these devices FA0 slash 1 to this PC, FA0 slash 2 to this PC, then we will connect this switch uh, to this uh, router s1 g0 slash 1 we will connect to gigabit ethernet 0 slash 1 okay just we will uh, rename these devices this is r1 and uh, here we will give uh, s2 now we will connect s2 to r1 uh, s2 we will connect to g0 slash 2 r1 g0 slash 2 now here we can see uh, two networks so just I will highlight those networks here we can see one network and here is the second network Now we will assign IP address for these two PCs. Coming to this PC, desktop IP configuration, here we will give 192.168.2.10. Another network. Then coming to this uh, PC7, from, from the same network, we will assign 2.11. Now we have to configure this router R1 uh, interfaces uh, gigabit ethernet 0 slash 1 and 0 slash 2. So coming to router R1 CLI. Here coming back to our topology. Uh, here we can see uh, this network is uh, connected to uh, the interface gigabit ethernet 0 slash 1 in this router R1. 
Hence, whenever we set IP address uh, for this interface, gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 1, uh, we have to assign from the uh, same subnet uh, what we given for these devices in this network. Also, here we can see one network which is connected to gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 2 uh, in this router R1. Hence, we have to assign IP address uh, from the uh, same subnet what we assigned uh, for the, these devices in this network. So, now we will configure these two interfaces uh, in this router R1. Configuration dialog, no. Enable configure terminal. First of all, we will go to the interface gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 1. Here we can see that interface. Now we will assign an IP address for this interface. Uh, we will give 192.168.1. We will give the first usable IP address from this network. It's 1. Then we have to give this up to mask. Okay. Then we will give no shutdown. And now here we can see the link between this router R1 and S1 is up. Now we will set IP address for the next interface. So we will exit. We will go to the interface gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 2. Then we will set the IP address 192.168. Dot uh, the network is a 2.0. So we will give a 2.1 the first usable IP address from this network. Then the sub to mask here. Now we will give no shutdown command. And now here we can see the link between this router R1 and the switch S2 is up. Now we are going to send a message from this network to this remote network. So we will send a message from PC1 to PC6. Before coming to that, we have to keep in mind uh, this host, I mean this PC1 and PC6, uh, they do not share the same network address. They are in different subnets. Then how this PC1 will send message to this PC6? Yes, as he unaware of uh, this uh, network, uh, he will send the packet to his default gateway if we set. And here uh, we did not set the default gateway for these uh, devices. Uh, so we will set the default gateway. Then in this network uh, we can see uh, the default gateway for these devices are the IP address of this interface gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 1 in this router R1. So we will set that. First of all coming to PC1 IP configuration. Uh, here we will uh, set the default gateway it's 192.168.1.1 same we have to set in PC2 right now we have to set a default gateway for these two devices PC6 and PC7 so coming to PC6 it's a default gateway is here uh, this is the IP address of this interface uh, gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 2 in this router R1. Because all these devices are connected to uh, this interface in this router R1. Okay. Now we will go to uh, PC7. IP configuration and here we will set the default gateway. It's here. Now they are ready to communicate. So we will ping from PC1 to PC6. Uh, so this uh, host is going to send packet uh, to uh, the remote uh, network host. Here this PC1 is unaware of this uh, PC6 network. So he will uh, send the packet to uh, his default gateway. Then this router R1 will uh, send this uh, packet to this PC6. We will ping it from PC1 command prompt and here we are going to ping to 192.168. it's a 2.10 
and we are waiting for the replies. We may get one or two requests timed out. Yes, and here we can see uh, we get the replies. Here we have to think about this uh, default gateway. Actually, this default gateway is a network device uh, which can uh, route traffic to uh, other networks, I mean uh, to uh, remote networks. We can remember this uh, default gateway or we can understand the concept of a default gateway uh, using a real-time example. Okay, consider a classroom. Suppose you want to talk to your friend who is in your same classroom. Then we no need to go outside of that room to talk to him because he is in the same room, in the same network. No need of gateway, no need to access the classroom door. Now just think, uh, you want to talk to your friend who is in another classroom, another network. Then we have to go outside of our classroom using classroom door, that is the default gateway. Then we have to go to his class and then communicate. Yes. Hence, whenever we want to communicate to a remote network, we require default gateway. Right. So friends, in this video, we just discussed about host forwarding decisions. Also, we have seen default gateway. Dear friends, if you have any doubt, any suggestions, please comment below. Also, you can show your love towards our channel by like and share. Just stay tuned and we will meet again with the next video. Thank you.